Milling machines are always very difficult to show off because the business end of the milling machine, the drum with the cutting bits is beneath the machine typically when it's working in contact with the pavement. So it's just buzzing about shooting out millings out of the front conveyor belt, but you can't really see the action and you can't really visualize what the heck's going on. However, I found these very conveniently located display cases featuring different drums different cutting bits on them. So this is essentially what's happening underneath the milling machine, but just uh, a little bit quicker than this. So it's spinning around, chewing into the asphalt, milling it up, and then you throw it into trucks. So this is exactly what's going on underneath all of these big milling machines. We actually, there's a surface miner over here that's super cool. North American Coal uses one of these to mine their biggest seam, I think it's, I could be wildly incorrect, but it's like the A seam. It's the biggest one, it's the one at the bottom. So it's either the A or the, the further down the alphabet. But anyway, uh, what it is, it's a, it basically a giant milling machine, but it eats the ground, the earth, rather than asphalt. Rather than a bunch of these cutting bits spread out even, so you're getting a nice, even uh, surface you're basic, you're just chewing the earth at a foot, two feet at a time. It's amazing what this thing can take out the earth. And the demonstration, the, the, the booth is actually pretty cool. You can be up on a different grade as this thing is working. So this is a huge difference. So it's pretty flexible. It can level itself out and it chews it up, spits it out either into piles that can then be loaded into trucks or you can load trucks directly. Um, it loads 789s and 793s with coal. So cool to watch. So these are the specific materials that you can address with this machine. Amongst many, many others. Many yes. others, yeah. Yes. yeah. But this is yes. a good, it's a good example of, it's, it's a really diverse, machine it can handle a lot of materials that is correct yeah. yes yes it can handle all of them and obviously as you said they are very diverse from very very soft to very very hard yeah. and abrasive so, so yes but it really and it really depends on the settings of the machine and then the tip the, the, the cutting tips uh, the cutting drum design uh, oh so it'll be a different drum there, there will be different drums for different material depending on the gradation requirements uh, that the customer wants. Uh, uh, and then there is a variety of different picks. These are only one example for each that is typical, that is used, but not exclusively. So okay. there are all kind of different variations of different picks for these different rocks in order to cut them. And there is a variety of different cutting drum designs, and I'm talking about the spacing, the horizontal distance from pick tip to pick tip on the spiral. Mm. And we can uh, change that one and obviously have a different number of picks on each cutting drum. Okay. And the holder system is another thing that is different as well. Wow which we can see yeah. over there yeah. if we want to look at. Sure, yeah. 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 Here we have a typical setup for some softer material, for example, coal, salt, potash. Um, that is called HT6, where we have a smaller uh, holder, and then we ho have also picks that we use that have a long shank and a small tungsten carbide insert. Huh. Um, here this one is uh, surface hardened, it's plasma coated here in order to make it wear resistant. This kind of cutting drum, this design is more for a hard rock application. This would be material that we saw earlier there, the iron ore uh, or a hard limestone or a bauxite and that's called HD14, the mm. different holder and different picks for different rocks. That's pretty cool. That's fascinating. Um, can you just explain the general machine? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we are talking about here the success of the 2500 SM, which is called the 280 SMI. 
Uh, it's a machine that comes in tier 4 final or tier 2, depending on which country it goes. Uh, the machine has about 245,000 pounds uh, or 128 uh, tons yeah. around. Uh, we t uh, talk about a cutting width of 2.8 meters, uh, a cutting depth of up to 2 feet deep. Um, depending on the material, we have various forward speeds. Normally, that can go from three to seven, eight meters a minute mm. cutting speed. And we are producing in a harder limestone operation about 1,200 to 1,400 tons per hour with this machine. 1,400 tons an hour? 1,400 tons an hour. Wow. Uh, it's a, a lot of material. We obviously do the cutting, crushing, and loading simultaneously. Oh. And degradation that is created created in a limestone operation is 98% smaller than 6 inches. So uh, we save basically a primary crusher, we only need a secondary crusher and then the material goes directly in the processing plant. So you're, with a machine like this, one of the benefits is you don't have to blast. That, that is absolutely correct. Yeah. There is a lot of drill and blast operations. This is another mining methodology. And then you don't need any explosives anymore. You don't need any drilling anymore. You don't have any oversize of the material uh. that you create. You have a very uniform corn. You don't have any vibrations. You don't have any um, fly rock. You don't uh. have any dust. And of course, the, the adjacent people living there love it because it's a very environmental friendly and sustainable way of mining. That's fascinating. I didn't know you could produce that much with these machines and uh, limestone. This, this That's is, crazy. This is a lot of material in a softer limestone at the moment in Foreman, Arkansas in the US. We produce about uh, up to 1,500 tons an hour even. Uh, in coal operation, we are also in this uh, 1,500 tons per hour. Obviously Obviously, the harder the material gets and the more abrasive it is, yeah. and the higher the tensile strength, the performance goes down accordingly. We, 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 I've seen one in Mississippi at a coal mine. That is correct. North American coal. And this is North American coal. Yeah. North American coal operates at the moment uh, five of uh, these big machines. It's yeah. called the 4200 SM. Um, there is one in Ackerman, Mississippi. Yep. Um, there are two more machines that they have in Farmington, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then they have also one machine in Eagle Bass. Mm -hmm. uh, with the bigger machine, which is basically double the size than the machine that we see here. Wow. Um, this is called the 4200, uh, which has a cutting width of 4.2 meters, a cutting depth up to uh, 650 uh, millimeters, uh -huh. uh, so 65 centimeters. We produce about 3,800 tons an hour. And so basically, in layman terms, this is a giant asphalt mill but for mining applications, yeah, roughly. Or, or a road milling machine on road, steroids. Yeah, a road milling machine, just it's been to the gym for that like is, two years straight. That is absolutely yeah, correct yeah. what you said. Yeah, it's, they're, these are awesome to watch run. They, they are awesome. They're to very watch. cool, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very strong, powerful, and uh, can you imagine 3,800 tons an hour? Well, that's what I was telling them when the first time I saw one in a coal application. Yeah. I mean, they're loading big trucks. Yeah. They're like 200 ton plus trucks. That is correct. And I was expecting it, I'm like, oh, okay, this is gonna take a while. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It filled yeah. that thing up yeah. quick. Two and a half minutes and uh, the, the trucks yeah. are filled. Yeah. And this yeah. is, as you said, uh, 3,800 tons an hour. They said something yeah. with coal that the, the drum can tell when it's out of coal. Uh, yeah, that is absolutely correct. We have a so-called um, uh, material sensing system. That, has, uh, that means we have nuclear sources there, and this is uh, americium and cesium uh, that are on the left-hand side and right-hand side on the bottom, the rear end of the cutting drum that scans into the material and then tells the machine operator about the PTU, uh, the value of the coal, really? or it tells him also if he is out of the coal and has a very low PTU, wow. uh, then it shows him on a diagram that he needs to raise or uh, respectively lower, depending on what yeah. he wants to do, the cutting drum on the right and left hand side independently. Holy smokes. And you can you run uh, GPS on something like this so uh, you can tell where that drum is? That is correct. 
correct. Yeah. We have the interface for uh, Trimble, Topcon, and Lycon on yeah. our machines. Yeah. And uh, not all the machines at the moment are running with GPS, but we provide the customer with the opportunity to get his uh, GPS system integrated into the machine. That's awesome. Yeah, you explained why it, it eliminates yeah. a lot of the mining process, a lot of equipment. Correct, yeah. correct. It's cutting, crushing, and loading with one machine, obviously, uh, right? You don't need any driller anymore. You don't yeah. need any explosives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you have this uh, various advantages that uh, comes with a mechanized cutting. Sure. And especially nowadays, where environmental friendly mining becomes more and more uh, important and people want to go away from drill and blast, mechanized cutting with a vertical surface miner provides this opportunity. Hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Great to meet you. It was nice to meet you. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Excellent. Thank you very much for having me. We're here at Deer and Workin and we are going to learn about how to build a road. So you were saying in full the depth Correct. surface. Yes, yeah, so there's two different, two different types of pavement recycling. Uh, full depth, which is deep. Uh, 20 inches deep and then cold in place which is typically three to five inches deep. Mm -hmm. So the first train we're going to look at, equipment train, is going to be the FDR, full depth recycling. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's, and the need is you have a road, it's used up, it's a yeah. little wobbly here or so there. Severe deterioration. Yeah. And so, so you need to come we, in and we essentially. Need to build the base back up. Okay. Yep. All right. Excellent. So instead of hauling material out to a landfill and bringing in virgin material from a quarry and building it up, we can recycle the material that's in place. It's already paid for. Uh, it's already paid for once. Uh, yeah. All we're doing is downsizing it, making it back to aggregate basically, hmm. and then building on top of that like a thin lift of like surface. So awesome. it's really economical and it's green. That's pretty cool. Obviously it starts with a, a cement spreader. And in, the, in this booth, it's a John Deere tractor being pulled with the Stroymaster uh, SW16TC. So we deal with Portland cement typically uh, or lime and that is the additive that will make everything strong. Mm -hmm. So this is a spreader from Stroymaster, and um, it spreads the material accurately on the ground. So you'll just spread it on top of the existing road? Correct. Yeah. So this is made to look like a asphalt pavement, yep. you know, with aggregate below it. Yeah. So the cement comes spread out, 50, 60 pounds a square yard is a typical application rate. And then you have our WR, a recycler, rubber tire recycler, eight foot wide. And what we do is we mix that asphalt, we downsize it into aggregate form. Uh, we mix in the binding agents such as cement, add water to it for hydration, mm -hmm. and then the material comes off the back. And then behind that, we want to get compaction. Sure. So we have a pad foot compactor that allows us to get that compaction at that maximum depth. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to compact it before we put it on grade with the, with the grader. Okay. So that's why the pad foot's there. This is a HC200. Um, we're trying, we're looking for, you know, 93, 94% compaction. Then we'll put it on grade, uh -huh. passes, put, put the material where it should be. And then what we don't show on this, in this booth is we'll have a smooth drum roller behind that for the final compaction. Gotcha. Okay, so you compact it, you put it all the grade, smooth drum, and then it's ready for asphalt. And it's ready for asphalt, correct. And we see a, probably a three or a four day um, cure time, let the cement hydrate. Yeah. And then we'll put a uh, fog seal down, uh, prime coat. Yeah. And then it can be uh, built asphalt layers. Okay. And depending on the traffic load for the road, it might need two or three lifts of asphalt. You know, interstates will probably have multiple lifts. If it's a rural road, it might just have one lift. How far down is that mixing? It could go 20 inches. 20 but inches. Typically, we see 12. But that, but that 12 is at that point solid, because it, it has asphalt, cement, lime, aggregate, Correct. soil, all mixed into one. All mixed together. Yeah. In a homogeneous way, um, enough moisture so you can reach compaction and get good density. Hmm. And then the, you know, like I said, the blade will smooth it, put it on grade, and then compact it. Yeah. It no, it's it's amazing. That's very cool. Well, that was the full depth. This is cold in place, typically three to five inches. And the way this is set up is typically we see, you know, you have a 12 foot lane, maybe a four foot shoulder. Mm -hmm. And the, the CR typically has a max width of 12 and a half foot wide. Okay. So we have to put a small mill out in front to go 16 foot wide. Okay. So this is like a four foot mill. We pre-mill it, put the material on the ground in a windrow fashion. Mm. 
So all, if this was the road, that's been milled and it was just placed here. That's correct. Yeah. It's placed here yeah. so it can be introduced and mixed with the CR. Okay. Because the maximum width of that is typically 12 and a half foot wide. Okay, that makes sense. So that allows us to reach 16 foot wide with the milled material. And the purpose, cold in place recycling, it's the, the structure, the, the subgrade, sub base is structurally sound. Correct. This is more so surface, replace the actual road itself. That's exactly right. It's yeah. typically in the asphalt layer only, and it's usually uh, just cracked. So yeah. maybe several cracking, maybe some patching has been done, but it's not the severe redo that the FDR is. Yeah, okay. okay. All that material is downsized. Because we're running in a downcut fashion, we can get smaller particles, so we get better downsized uh, pieces. All that material from the windrows there, the 12 and a half foot wide pavement is underneath there. All that gets downsized. We inject a foam bitu bitumen or emulsion, which is our binding agent. Yeah. Uh, into there, we inject compaction water, and then all that material is mixed inside the drum, and then it gets collected on our lower belt and our upper belt, and we place that material directly into a paver. Wow. So we're not putting the material on the ground like in the other process. We're also not putting the material on grade with the blade making multiple passes. We're placing it into a paver, spreading it one time, and then we're compacting it behind that. So where's your, where's your oil truck? Oil trucks typically out front of the CR. Oh, okay. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're you, that mill, tanker. that mill would be down the ways. Correct. Okay, and your tanker would be front in front. Correct. Your tanker and water. So we will be pushing okay. the tanker truck of oil with this unit here. Okay. With a push bar. Yeah. Solid push bar. Yeah. And then the whole train continues down the road. So, and the benefit to explain the benefit of this is you, as you said on the other project, the the city or whatever, they've already paid for that road. They've already bought that material, bought that asphalt. So if it's traditional pavement replacement, uh, mill and fill, you have to mill all of that out, put it into trucks, haul it off, bring new aggregate asphalt, you know, everything back in there. Exactly. Bring asphalt from new aggregate. So it's a brand new product, lots of trucking. This, you're using the existing asphalt, but just sprucing it up a little bit with some new oil, a little bit of water. Correct. And then you get a new product at the end. Significant cost savings because we're keeping all the material in place. Yeah. And it's green because we're not hauling it to a landfill. Mm -hmm. We're reusing the material that's already here. Sure. So huge benefits there as well. Mm. And and at the end of the day, we have constructed a new road that's going to have a lifetime of 15 to 20 years yeah. added to it. Yeah. Yeah. With existing material. One, one question. You, you said this had a down cut. Can you run the drum in either direction? Yes. Typical mills are up cut. Really? Correct. So most of the mills, uh, all the mills that you see in the booth here are, are upcut mills, uh, just the way it's always been done. Uh, it's faster to go upcut hmm. when you're trying to remove the material quickly. Upcut's better. But for our recycler, this specific recycler, it's in downcut. So because we're striking it first, we get better sizing. It basically fractures that asphalt into the particles that it was originally in. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Makes sense. I didn't, I didn't know you could yep. vary that. So the... So that mill will be upcut. That mill is upcut. This will be downcut. This is downcut. Okay. Chase, remember, don't fill your don't fill your coffee here. Okay. Got it. Go inside to do that. Got it. The material is taken into the asphalt paper, and when we do three to five inches of asphalt or of, of recycling layer, uh, vibratory screed is uh, is normal. Hmm. If we go deeper, this machine can go 12 inches in depth. Um, we need a high compaction screen. So okay. we'll need tamper bars yeah. and pressure bars. But that's a monster lift. It is. Yeah, it's 12 monster. inches, that's a lot of asphalt. And the reason why you see an insert, you typically don't see an insert in pavers, is because recycling is a, like a materials management game. You have surpluses and, um, mm. and uh, deficiencies. So this gives us a little bit extra capacity to keep that paver screed consistent. Okay. We want a smooth ride, we want everything on grade, and we want we don't really want to adjust that paver once we get going. Sure. And it's called cold in place because asphalt's typically hot. Correct. But you don't need to add heat in this process. We're not. It, we, we might use uh, 320 degree liquid uh, asphalt, sure. but when we make it into the foam, it becomes cool. We inject, so you got hot oil, you have uh, mist of water, and that reaction creates bubbles, foam. Wow. Almost like shaving cream, and those spot welds that come from that shaving cream is what keeps the material together. Really? Yep. 
Wow. So it's, it's used uh, significantly <clears throat> here in Europe and it's uh, become more and more popular in the US. So at this point, it's essentially back to asphalt. It's cold, it's, yeah. it's cold here. It's you cold, it. yeah, cold, but but new asphalt, new, It's got a recycled. agent that'll keep it together. Yeah. Once it's rolled, it'll have the strength to put traffic on immediately. Huh. So you don't have to keep the road shut down for an extended period of time. And then you roll it like asphalt? Correct, we typically have two smooth drum rollers behind it. And like I said, once the rollers are done compacting it, you can open up the traffic. It's amazing. So it's a quick process, um, l less disruption to the traveling public than most processes. This is a clever way of setting it up. You can, you can visualize it pretty easily. Right, I mean, I've seen it before, so. So but. if a customer comes in and they don't understand the recycling process, this yeah. is a perfect way to walk them through. Because in the States, I mean, even most people that have worked with asphalt for decades have never seen this process. Right. It's still pretty rare. That's correct. Yeah, the traditional mill and fill. You know, mill and fill is still the standard, yeah. Is the standard, but yeah. you're getting more and more eight road owners understanding this process and saying, why don't we use this? Mm. It, it uh, saves money, it saves the environment, yeah. and it's quicker. Yeah, it makes less sense. less disruptive to the public. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, I think, great. What we've tried to do here is um, show all of the technology that we have for all of the brands and so bring them together in one center mm -hmm. such that we can show you the Deere solutions, the Vertkin solutions, the Kleeman solutions, the Vugalo solutions, and bring all those technologies that you saw through the production system aligned into one technology center. In the past, we've actually showed this separated. Yeah. It gives you an opportunity as a customer to see all the solutions come together as one. So what we got here, we've got uh, quite a few different displays we've got. We've got a smart grade in our automation suite. I think Luke talked to you about that yeah. outside with yeah. the grader. So we've got kind of a video so you get kind of see it in action so okay. you can see all the different automation features that we have, sure. as well as the full smart grade solution. So the integrated 3D grade control. So kind of an overview here. There's a QR code with some, some gains so you kind of get a sense of kind of overall like what the Great control technology can do for you in yeah. an actual job. So, yeah, gotcha. So walking through kind of the history of motor graders, we launched motor graders here in Europe in 2019. So that was uh, kind of the, the launch for graders in Europe. Um, and then we've been progressing the, the lineup uh, through a bunch of different countries. We started out with just Germany and France, and now we've uh, progressed through a uh, multitude of different European countries. They've always been in the States. Yep. But you brought them to Europe three years ago. Yep, exactly. Yeah. We've been building motor since obviously since the 60s, so it's been kind yeah. of a very stable platform for us for a long time. It's interesting, we've been learning a little bit about how graders are different in, yeah. in Europe compared yeah. to the States. Yeah, totally. very, very different. Very different machines. Very different. Right? Yeah, they use yeah. them completely differently. I mean, it starts off with the front dozer blade, right? Yeah. Just, it's just yes, a different application. Yes, it's the front dozer blade yeah, that I noticed right away. Every yeah. single one has one. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Just, that's how they use them. Right? Just like excavators, everything over here has got its own rotator on, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just a different different market. They do things slightly differently, so mm -hmm. it's been... We are showcasing the HD12E, which is a completely electric uh, compactor. I really like this display right here because it's kind of like an x-ray screen and you can move it back and forth and visualize the components that are in the machine and you can see the drive motor the steering motor the dashboard as well as the controller and it's clickable so you click on it and you get more information in terms of how it integrates and what the individual components of the system are as well as the data flows the hydraulic flow and the energy flow in the system is something that you can visualize here as well. Um, as far as the vibration and oscillation is concerned, we have fully electric motors for that as well, so you don't even need hydraulic drive on that. Amazing.